Okay, so this episode is the Blue Demon, and I'm gonna sound like a real dumbass. Um, I'm assuming that if you're watching this, you would have seen the episode, and the Blue Demon is this masked character, really athletic, or really good with, uh, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat and weapons and stuff. At first, not the whole way through, but at first... I thought maybe it was going to be the old lady. The lady that gives the cures with the frozen frogs and stuff. I know how stupid that sounds, but again, it's the only other character they introduced. So I thought maybe it was going to be her. And, you know, then you see the person's really athletic. I'm like, well, maybe that's going to be the message. You know, like, oh, you can't, you know, judge a book by its cover and old people can be just as athletic and go old people. Uh, and then you, as you see more and more of the body, it's sort of like, yeah, that's that's probably not her. And... The answer was actually unbelievably obvious, but, uh, yeah, so that's my dumb mistake that I made. <laughs> I thought I'd share it with you. Um, but, yeah, w with that said, uh, Blue Demon, this is another, uh, a really strong episode. You got, um, uh, y you got Sokka and uh, Katara are, are both sick, and I like that. I like that it actually carries over from the last episode, because it always seems to be the thing, like, you know, superheroes and stuff, they go through all this stuff and there's never any consequences or repercussions of what happened physically in the last one. I like even something as small as just getting sick from the rain. I, I really like that. I like that they tied that in uh, so cleverly. Um, and some good lines from uh, 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 Sokka and this. I like the hallucinations and stuff are, are really good. Um, I also like how you don't... We finally see what Momo hears, you know, what the animals hear, because it is like, well, how much do these animals understand? And you see from his point of view, it's actually very little, to the point where they just want him to go get water, and he keeps bringing back all these various things that they could probably sell for water, but uh, he never actually brings water. So, what can you do? Uh, but that's not the focus. The focus is uh, you got... Uh, Aang is fighting off the, this general now, this general that's been promoted. He, I, I forget his name, the, the Malfoy guy. Um, you know, so, so he, he's promoted, uh, and he gets these archers that are, like, world-class archers. They make, you know, Legolas look like a, like a lamb. I mean, it's just, like, they're really good. And they manage to capture the Avatar. They're so good they can capture a kid with arrows without killing him. Uh, and I like the fact they gave... An explanation, I really like this, because in so many of these shows, of course, the villain can't kill the hero, because you need the hero alive, and why do they keep them alive, and they always have to make up these excuses. This is a good excuse. They say, if we kill you, you'll just be reincarnated as someone else. You know, it. that's how it works. So, we're actually going to keep you alive, not only as long as possible, but as painfully as possible. That makes sense. So I, that's a very clever way around, especially in the kids' show, why you can't kill this character. I thought that was very smart. Um, but uh, but obviously you got this um, the, the, this blue demon character that comes in, uh, the, the saves Aang, gets him out of there. I'm still... Some of these wind-bending powers, like, I don't know how... It's like, he, he's... How can anyone restrain this kid when you see half the stuff he does? I mean, he just goes and blows this guy across the room. It's like, how... How can anyone restrain this kid? I I don't know. Whatever you put him in, it's like he can probably get out of it. But uh, again, that that uh, nitpick. Uh, so this this blue demon comes along, gets him out of there, doesn't speak, wears a mask, and uh, most of it is just this long, well done fight scene of them escaping. It actually reminded me a lot of Disney's uh, Robin Hood, like how good that climax was. How just everything is trying to get him. It's just like you know, one person will do this time. You know trying to get out of this place, and every time they're about to make it, something else stops them, and a million other guys are coming in, and they got to get away from them, and they got to think on their feet. It's a very exciting, good action sequence. I really like those sequences where just everything is out to get the hero, and somehow they keep avoiding it, and they but they don't do it with ease. It's like you can see the panic, and it gets your heart going and stuff. So it's it's really, really good. And then it gets especially interesting when, you know... The, the general says, you know, uh, kill the blue guy, but don't kill the avatar. We need him alive. And then the blue guy, he takes out the swords and holds it up to Aang's neck. And even Aang is like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, he could kill me. Um, and, you know, and that assures their escape. Uh, again, very, very smart, especially when you find out, you know, who it is. Which, again, I, I think I give away it is Zuko, obviously. Um, and... 
it's interesting because we know obviously why he's doing it. He's doing it so uh, he can get his honor back, so he can return the avatar, he can get the glory. And we find out the general is pretty much doing it for the same reason. Uh, you know, he wants the glory as well. And I think both... The main difference, I think the general knows the avatar is powerful, but I think he still sees because he's a kid... All right, this is still managed, but like I can do this. It's it's a kid. Uh, we can do this. Uh, and I like that Zuko, like he underestimated him once, and now he's like, never again. I will not ever do that again. So I like there's a little bit of a, a variation with the two villains there, um, and the the design of the of this place, as always, is really good. But good shadows in this one. Good harsh, heavy shadows. Uh, but you can still make it out. Uh, it, it's not so bad that, you know, you're going, well, what's going on? What you can still make it out, uh, and it just makes the scenes, uh, so much more menacing and so much more intense. Um, so the, the other thing that I say is really strong in this one that, again, sort of continuing over from the last episode, is that connection between Aang and Zuko, that there is very much this connection, and now they're starting to see it. They're starting to sort of realize it as well. Um, I, I think Aang puts it together because he realizes that Zuko is doing this now for himself to get back something he really needs or he really values. And Aang knows that he's essentially doing what he's doing for the same reason. Uh, and he puts it together, you know, there's a scene where he's sitting with Zuko, Zuko's waking up, he's still by his side, you know, probably protecting him, making sure nobody comes after him, and, you know, says, you know, well, what if in another life, you know, we could have been friends, we could have been this, you know, or whatever. Uh, yeah, a, a touch cliche, but, I mean, warranted. It, it, it's a warranted speech. Um, and Zuko just sort of looks at him and just, like, with one blow, he's like, ah! and tries to kill him. It's just a really great scene, but you can, again, just by seeing... Zuko trying to sleep that night, you can see that he knows it too, that they're actually more similar than, than they realize. Um, and it's just, this is the situation they're in, and they just, they gotta deal with it. And, and I like that, and you can see Aang, you know, realizes that too when he goes, um, uh, well, when he goes back to, uh, uh, Sokka and Katara, you know, that, that he's sort of rolling too, and they say, did you make any friend? No. You know, and there's, and and you can feel that sadness in both of them that you know hey maybe in another circumstance may, maybe like we could have been like really really good friends or something but there's this is the circumstance that is and at least for now there's no changing it and, and that's why I got out of it not that there's never gonna be a change for it but that the situation now is that it can't happen and they both acknowledge that um so, again, a, a real strong one, a real good one, and even though the majority of it is action, I think when you find out who it is, uh, and how strongly they're actually, you know, that Zuko is not only fighting to get this kid out so he can claim him, but also that they are working together, um, I think the action, the longer action, it, it, again, is justified. I, I think it actually really works, and it is kind of needed. Uh, because you need to see them working together, even though he's uh, got the face covered. So, again, very uh, very good episode. I, I, you know, my favorite ones are obviously the ones that really continue the story and, and really look into the characters uh, and, and let them sort of lead the story. So, uh, uh, another real strong one. Uh, about all I can say about it, and I'll see you the next one.